Has anyone ever, ever thought like, man, it'd be really cool to kind of just like do ventriloquism? <laughs> like you ever had that thought in the back of your mind where you're just like, what if I, what if I tried? What if I just got like a dummy? Well, maybe not a dummy, but like something, like a puppet or something. Dummies are fucking creepy. But like, what if you got like a puppet or something and did a little bit of ventriloquism and you just learned how to do it? How fun would that be? I think that would be fun, right? <laughs> Anyways, now that I have started my my uh, my ramblings of madness, welcome, one and all, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, man, machine, everything that lies within between, to more Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, where we last left off. That was like what last week or some bullshit. <laughs> Where we last left off, we did the whole entire trial of, um, Mr. Soseki, I think his name is. Um, a, uh, a literature student, a literature student, uh, who came to London or whatever to study, well, of course, to study literature, right? He was framed for murder. Well, not framed, but he was, well, I guess kind of framed. What, what would you call it, right? Because no one did it in, like, malice right it wasn't like anyone said fuck that guy i'm gonna frame it on him right it was just kind of an accident right but we got down to the bottom of it we cleared his name but his fate still uh still is um undetermined i would say because apparently anyone who is going against um what's his name of uh, what the fuck? What the hell is the character's name? I just hit my microphone. Great. What the hell is the character's name? Um, Von Zykes? Von Zykes. Yeah? Anyone who goes against him, aka the Reaper, is surely to die, whether by the hands of the law or miracle, I guess. I don't fucking know. So, we're all crossing our fingers. But after the trial, we were, uh, we were invited to stay with Herlock Shlomes. And now our office is in his attic, I guess, <laughs> right? I don't know. But let's see. Let us continue and see what the world the fucking Great Ace Attorney has in store for us at the start of the next act, arc, chapter, something. I don't fucking know what to call it. Episode five, the Hound of the, of the Bakersville. Bakersvilles. It's coming! Sholmes' cry pierced through the thick wall of fog around us. Wisps of vapor flowed over the pistol as I cocked it, and I waited breathlessly in the stillness. The silence lasted for what seemed an eternity, until, at last, it appeared. From the shadows of the cloud, an enormous beast sprang out upon us. A hound it was but not such a hound as any mortal has ever seen. Its eyes glowed with a smoldering glare. The whole of its ox-sized body was outlined in white-hot flames. Its rumbling pant and hideous howl so terrified was I that I began to tremble with fear. Look well, Wilson, Sholmes declared, gazing upon the mystical beast. For this, this is the diabolical hound of the Baskervilles. Baskervilles. That's that's what it was. I thought it said Bakervilles. Baskervilles? What the fuck? That's a that's a name. Oh, you kooky English people. <laughs> Our first two months in London passed by in a flash, like Barry Allen. In the disc, in the disc, con fuck. I'm already fucking up words. Great, good job. I might as well just end the stream now. <laughs> In the disconcerting courtroom experience we were first thrown into on the day we arrived in the country, and in Soseki-san's terrible ordeal that had followed closely behind, we had emerged victorious. However, there then came an abrupt end to our opportunities to appear in court. Which was hardly surprising, of course, since I was nothing more than an amateur an unknown student of law from a faraway land. That and everybody in London is apparently super fucking racist. 
So life in our little office was very quiet. That is, until it was shattered one day by that fateful telegram. 15th April, 9.13 AM. Narahodo's legal consul, consultant, consult, I can't say the word, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hello, who's at the door? That morning, I was woken by the un, unreserved, unreserved? Yeah, unreserved knocking of the door by the telegram boy. But after he'd gone, Cesaro san's behavior became very obviously strange. Um, Cesaro san. Yeah? It is time to leave for court already? Is it? I don't know. Let me see. What case is it today? I don't think I'm scheduled to defend anyone at the moment. Am I? Oh, no, of course not. How silly of me. But I think Iris said she would make us breakfast this morning. So shall we go downstairs to Mr. Shlom's suite? Yes. Iris makes the most delicious breakfast food. Specifically breakfast food. Eggs? She got it. Waffles? Yeah. Pancakes? Crepes? Sure. Right? Hash browns? Maybe. But ask her to make a burger, she's gonna burn down the whole fucking house. She does, doesn't she? And once our bellies are full, we can leave for court in fighting fit form. Do we have any cases to work on? Let me see. What case is it today? I feel like we haven't worked on any cases at all. Here we go again. Ah, shit. Here we go again. <laughs> Speak to me. I suppose osaki san will, will have arrived in Japan by now, won't he? Yes, I should think so. He left immediately after the terrible ordeal. I mean, he said so himself. He was like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> Maybe he drowned at sea. Which would mean he should have completed the voyage already. Or be just a few days away. Or maybe the ship just fucking crashed. A fortnight ago. Fortnight. <laughs> Among Us? <laughs> a fortnight ago, we had. <laughs> I need a moment. A fortnight ago, we had the very long telegram for, uh, from him. Do you remember? Complaining of seasickness. But by large, it seems the voyage has been going pretty well. Something wrong, Naruhodo-san? I was just wondering. We known each other for like two months. Stop calling me Naruhodo, please. Just call me. Why don't you just call me by my fucking name? <laughs> we may have become Soseki's. Uh, wait, what? What the hell is that? Oh, what might have become a Soseki-san had he stayed in London? That's all. Okay. You mean in regards to Lord Von Zykes, the Reaper? Yes. I can't help but wonder if sea sickness would have pl would have played into. I can't even fucking wow. Would have paled into insignificant into insignificance in that case. Jesus. Why can't I fucking read? Also, I wanna make sure that my mic is actually on for a moment. <laughs> Alright, good. We're good. Don't need any repeats of uh Persona 4. The two times in the playthrough where it's like, what? The game audio is muted? Why? <laughs> Oh shit, that totally reminds me. I should be recording this. Fuck, I gotta remind myself to actually record off of this software. Instead of relying on Twitch's bullshit. <laughs> so what was it about? The telegram that was delivered this morning, I mean. Oh, a, a telegram? I... I don't know what you're talking about! What are you... What? Sasato. Come on, girl. What you doing? Sorry, but you're not gonna get away with that. <laughs> well, I didn't think I would, but you had to try anyways. Actually, um... Don't give it a moment thought. It's nothing. Nothing interesting. Boring, in fact. Ahem. It was just a boring old telegram. 
That's three times now that she tried to <laughs> that she tried and failed to convince me it was nothing. What'd you hide in? I promise that I'll tell you about it at some point. Alright. Okay. I'm I am Alright. You know what? I'm gonna let you rock. Yeah, alright, I understand. I'll, I'll let you rock. You know? For now. <laughs> what is it they say? That no one who stands stands in the dock can be saved by the Reaper, right? Like the way the Nightmare's trial ended on the very day we arrived in London. Even two months on, the cause of the dreadful fire is still a mystery. Yes, but at least sasaki san is safely out of the country now. Presumably that means... That the Curse of the Reaper can only take effect within the confines of the City of London, perhaps? Even in that case, it's a little comfort. I have a terrible sense of forebo- <laughs> I have a terrible sense of foreboding. That's a weird way to word that. If the Legend of the Reaper is to be believed, it would mean he wields the Sword of Justice himself. Come to think of it, I wonder what he's been up to these past two months. Surely not wielding that sword against more adequate defenses. Or defendants, my bad. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Apparently Lord Von Zykes hasn't appeared in courts once since our last encounter. Alright, that's... that's weird. Huh. Oh, alright. Yes, yeah, since osaki sans trial, he's withdrawn from judicial service again, it seems. But why? Really? Just like before, when he wasn't seen in court at all for several years. So, it's just been... So it's just been me who's faced him recently? In spite of the trials? Huh. Just my luck. I wonder, if luck doesn't come into it... Yeah, I feel like... I feel like he's doing some sort of reconnaissance or some bullshit, you know? Right? Because we can't forget, I mean, it's been months since it happened for me anyways. But, <laughs> can't forget the first trial we did. Oh, we're just gonna let her go. We're just gonna let her go? Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Sorry, what does that mean? Oh, nothing. <laughs> Never mind. All right. Okay. Guess we'll uh get some breakfast. But first, I want you to look at this. It means a great deal to me, you know, that you cherish his armband so and wear it each time you appear in court. Well, it's very important to me. It's what shows that I'm a lawyer. And whenever I wear it, I feel as though it gives me strength through Kazuma. I absolutely can't be without it, especially when I'm at a critical point in the trial. But, just the other day, I noticed you wearing it when we went to visit the park. Sometimes I forget to take it off, alright? I'm just, I'm just proud of it. It's my precious. It's my first precious. It's out of sun, you're my second. <laughs> Smooth moves. Alright, uh... I kind of do want to look around a little bit. Oops, wrong button. I thought I can just press, you know, the shoulder button. Can you... Wait. This gate thoroughly, but I can't find anything out of place. Uh, what button is it to... Oh. It's the directional pad. There's a little orange just sitting here. Ah, this must be the telegram. Let's see. <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> no! You mustn't look at that! Not under any circumstances. All right, damn, I won't. Shit. I'm sorry, Naruto-san, but you can be very mischievous at times. Says the person that throws me across the fucking room unannounced every time, really? Then put the telegram away if you don't want people to look at it. All right. <laughs> I didn't even know it was the telegram. I was just, I was just actually curious. I was like, ooh, what's this? And she's like, don't fucking touch it. <laughs> like, okay, I'm sorry.
15th of April. Shalom, sweet. Morning, Runo. Morning, Susie. Good morning, Iris. What the f fuck? <laughs> Who's playing the violin? And why is it so bad? Um, Iris. What is it, Runo? What the fuck is that noise? It sounds like a cat being strangled. Oh, yes, you noticed that, didn't you? Oh my fucking god, can you stop it? Early isn't the best form, isn't it? <laughs> Shit. Early isn't in the best form in the morning, it seems. Hey Shlomes, I know you're probably down the dumps or, I don't know, you got some funky shit going on with you, but I got a, I got two questions. First of all, why is there a knife in your wall? Because I just saw that. And why are there bullet holes in the wall that say VR? What the hell is that about? Um, hello, Mr. Shlomes? G good morning. <laughs> A good morning to die, perhaps. Oh, shit. Did something happen, Mr. Sloans? You look miserable in the way you were playing the violin before. <laughs> My analytical mind is dead. Music is dead. The world is dead. Cut my life into pieces! <laughs> Damn this blanched existence! That's all it is, my dear fellow. No, nothing of consequence. And You me both, Sasato. Well, Iris, isn't it time we ate? Some dry toast and ins and in spit and spip it? And sit? I don't fuck I'm sorry, I don't know what that word is. <laughs> I probably do, just don't recognize it. And coffee for me, if it's not too much trouble. What? Oh my god, is fucking Soseki's cat around here? Oh look! It's Waga- is- is Waga- Waga high? Waga he? What? <laughs> How do you say that? Waga high. Good morning, boy. That must be some sort of tiny door for cats to use. But, how did it get here? Well then, everyone, time for breakfast. What the fuck? I'm sorry, what's going on right now? Hold up. I, hmm. OBS just fucking, like, froze for me. I don't know what the hell just happened. And I'm happy that I fucking caught that shit, too. It seems to be continuing now. Okay. Alright, well that was weird. Well then, everyone, time for breakfast. I just want to keep an eye on it real quick. See if it actually is uh, fucking up the stream. It's definitely not. Not going right with this. Let me check this out. What the hell is going on here today? I'm restarting the, uh, not the stream, but I'm restarting the, the page for me real quick. Okay, it seems fine now, but for, for like a quick second, it like kind of stopped for me. I'm not sure if it affected you guys at all, but it looked like it looked like something bad went down. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't uh, proceed any further. Okay, I think we're good now. Oh, wonderful. Let me help you, Iris. Hmm. It would indeed... Oh, wait, nope. It's fucking up again. What the hell is going on? 
All right. What the fuck is going on today? I might need to restart the stream real quick, actually. All right. Where the hell is my remote? Oh, there it is. Remote, controller, controller, remote. All right. Well, we're back. Um, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know what the fuck happened to my PC, but for some goddamn reason, my disk drive was just constantly full. So I went to my task manager and I'm like, what the hell is all this bullshit going on here? Right? So, as of right now, it is fixed. Temporarily. Later on today, I'm gonna have to finagle with some of that stuff. Though, honestly. And just... Just do like a... Like a strong-ass cleaning. Out of the PC, you know? And then maybe... Finally take my ass over to the... PC shop. And grab an SSD or some bullshit. I don't know. <laughs> I've been holding up, holding off upgrading this damn thing for a while. But anyways, we shouldn't have any more problems tonight. Hopefully, I just inched it, didn't I? All right. Now, hopefully, nothing was lost because I did a, uh, I did make sure to press that record button, right? earlier before the stream got fucked up so hopefully none of it got fucked up and it's all gonna be saved in the in the YouTube video or some bullshit but anyways <clears throat> we're back so something's missing from Mr. Shlom's desk he's down in the dumps today what the hell's wrong with you Shlom's what's going on wanting to die <laughs> the missing machine Mr. Sloan's, I don't like to pry, but... Your desk looks rather empty today. Ah, well done, Mr. Sato. Your observation skills do you credit. Oh no, Mr. Sloan's. They pale, in, they pale into insignificant... Wait, what? They pale into insignificance. Am I even saying that right? <laughs> yeah, that is yeah, that is the word insignificance. I don't, I don't, I'm not in my tip-top shape today, am I? When compared to yours, they pale into insignificance. Oh, that's a weird way of working that. You struggled to notice, wouldn't you? You mean Hurley's great and alert? What the fuck? I can't say the word analysis. Jesus, and a lit and a fuck. Analytics scope? I can't say that word. What the fuck? <laughs> That's a Windbanks now. That's a Windy Banks now. What the fuck? What the hell is a Windy Banks? What the hell is with you people? Why do you keep saying these weird words? <laughs> Sorry. What's a Windy Bank? Yeah, exactly. What the fuck? Speak English, damn it. And I mean, like, American English. Improper English. <laughs> no, Windy Banks. The, the pawn brokery. Pawn? What? You mean you pawned the enormous machine off of you? Uh, off of what? That, Alright, that was just my fuck up. You mean you pawned the enormous machine of yours? It has some considerable value, you see. Quite undeservingly. But, isn't it very important? Isn't it a very important machine to you? Fuck. Can you tell that, not only that I'm not in tip-top shape tonight, but the stream fucking up earlier just completely fucked my whole mood over. God damn it. <laughs> I do wish you had consulted us if your situation had become so dire. What the fuck are you talking about, Sasato? We're broke ourselves. That's why we're living here. We can't help him with his monetary shit. I should have gladly passed a little income I have to you. Dear madam. Oh, dear madam. Things are far from desperate. But, but the pawnbroker has you has your wonderful machine. Not gonna be anything but desperate. Making use of pawnbrokery is quite ordinary here in London, I assure you. Is it? It doesn't sound ordinary at all. It would seem that neither of you fully understand how pawnbrokery works. 
Oh, what's to understand exactly? What did you? How oh, pawnbrokery works? Did you uh? What what'd you do? Did you did you lease the item or some shit? What was going on? Did you not pay your installments? What happened? You had that shit on a down payment? Um, what did you mean when you said we didn't fully understand how pawnbrokery works? To the people of London, pawnbrokeries are akin to banks. Oh, so. Oh. What didn't you pay, you son of a bitch? They tucked that shit for compensation? Banks. On Mondays, merchants relinquish their finest jackets and, tra and trappings to their uh, to their pawnbroker of choice. With the money they receive in return, they are able to trade happily through the week. And then on Saturdays, they go to recover their things using the money they've earned. I had no idea. This has been a fascinating lesson for us. Very fascinating indeed. Everyone does it, you see, especially people in inner London. And should they have money to spare, they would purchase another fine jacket. And the rich get richer. Not to wear, obviously, but to pawn, should the need arise. Oh, how ingenious. So, whenever we have something that, uh, that's getting in the way, we leave it at Windy Banks, you see? Pawnbrokery can be uh, can be thought of as an extremely secure vault. Who would have that? Who would have thought that even pawnbrokers are different here in Great Britain? Of course, you have to watch Hurley with it. Sometimes he pawns things he really shouldn't. Don't you, Hurley? Oh, <laughs> so you're not getting it back? <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> what doesn't matter? The world is dead to me now. Jesus. You shouldn't be very unhappy this morning, Mr. Slums. What's happened? It used to be the case. That's in my hands. This violin sung like the dawn chorus. Its mellicent tones would make flowers bloom. It would. But now, the muses are unamused. <laughs> They're unamused today. They're unamused with me. The goddesses of music have thrown me over. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Slums? For hours, I have bowed. For days, even. Through the night, I have endeavored to no avail. That sound, my tone, is lost. That brilliant, clear, unwavering tone. <laughs> Gone forever! <laughs> no more recitals of, un of unbridled emotion. Well, you haven't been practicing much lately, have you, really? I went, and, I went, I went a wee bit Scottish there. <laughs> I don't know what happened when I was reading her line. I fucking turned to Shrek for a moment. Ogres have layers. <laughs> Onions, my bad, not ogres. Well, <laughs> ogres are like onions. They have layers. <laughs> Jesus. Don't worry, I'm sure it'll come back to you in time. Heed my words, Mr. Narahodo. The goddesses of the arts are fickle. One day they spoke... They, oh, wow, I couldn't... Wow, I like bit my tongue severely on that word. One day they bestowed genius on a man. The next day, unmercifully withdrawing it. Oh, dear. <sighs> Why is this happening to me? They take the turn I have for the volley- uh, Wow. Wow. What is with my mouth today? Why can't I do word good? If they take the turn I have for the violin with me, what is left for Pete- For Pete's sake. For pity's sake. What the fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> um, deduction perhaps? Isn't that what you're known for? Hmm. Well, Mr. Slums, I don't... Maybe this will cheer you up. Mr. Slums, could I ask for your opinion about this? 
you lure me to raise my 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 linguine my linguine what the fuck that that is a word <laughs> you lure me to raise my head with the promise of some mental exhilaration yet in my morbid depression i am comforted with the most mundane of problems oh okay my mind finds greater stimulation in the forgiving mono uh, monotony, monotony? Yeah, that's a word. Of the floor, than in your miserable offering. Wow, always glad to help, dickhead. Oh, my head weighs heavy on my shoulders. Well, I don't know what I can do to fucking help you. Uh, talk to me. What's your face? Waghai. Wagahi, or however the fuck you, whatever you pronounce the cat's name. Mr. Natsume's cat seems to have settled in, in his new home pretty well. Oh, yes. And I've become very attached to little Waggy. I call him Wagyu. <laughs> hmm. It would appear his previous owner has completely forgotten him to him. I mean, he wasn't really his owner, right? The cat kind of just, like, freeloaded. And just kind of snuck in, I guess. Also, why do you have like a genie shoe in the background? What the hell is that about? <laughs> you got some weird shit in here, Shlomes. Cats are unfeeling creatures. They're me they're mews. They're mews. <laughs> All these rare mews that they keep finding under these trucks. Jesus. They're mews as empty as the hearts of the muses. If Mr. Natsume had no in in fuck, why can't I read? Damn. Intonation of taking Waggy back to Japan. I wonder why he kept him in the first place. I expect he would have taken him if he could. But pets are strictly forbidden aboard steamships, in our experience. And for good reason. Terrible things can happen if the rules of passage, of passage are not obeyed. Well, I don't mind. Because Waggy is adorable. Waggy is adorable. Yes, he really is. Oh, yes. What about the door? I don't remember seeing that tiny thing in the main door before. Where did that come from? Oh, you noticed. You're observant, Bruno. Look, I use this. This is my latest invention. What? What is that? I call it the cat flamba mat. What? Flapo mat? <laughs> the cat flapo mat. Gosh, a machine, <laughs> a machine for making doors just for cats. That's right, it can make a cat flap for a little furry friend like Waggy in seconds. And it can do it, it can do it on any, any door at all, no matter what it's made of. It's very powerful, you see. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna quickly just do something on my side of the stream. There we go. I had like my volume up a little bit too high and I can kind of hear my own voice and I don't want to hear that. <laughs> Wouldn't it have been quicker to just make the cat flap rather than making a machine to make the cat flap? Well, yeah, maybe. But now I can make cat flaps anywhere I like. Oh, I think it's wonderful. You must make one for us in the door to our office upstairs, Iris. She really knows how to come up with unconventional inventions, this girl. Oh, what was that? Did someone step on the cat? Did someone break its spine? Waghai? Oh, oh, oh. What was that? Oh no! My guy's tangled up in your violin! I think he's... I think he thinks it's a toy. No! What is he doing to it? Oh dear. Mr. Sloan's precious violin. Why should I care? What? I shouldn't be surprised. 
cat is a more <laughs> the cat's a more accomplished musician than I am. Jesus. Someone's down in the dumps. Well, anyways, I'll put it back where it lives, shall I, Hurley? Out of the cat's reach, if possible. Maybe we should assess the damages. Hmm. Alright. Well, let's take a quick look, see, huh? Now, what did it do to the violin? So, this is the violin, is it? It's a strav strav God strav strav de ver 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 ver. It's a special type of violin made for fancy pants. Jesus, big word names that I can't do. <laughs> One of the finest violins in the world, made by the renowned Italian luthaner luthaner yeah, Antonio Stradivari 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 Bearstein Bears. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. Doesn't really look like anything special to me. I happen upon it covered in dust, lingui- linguishing, lingui- what the fuck? Languishing, that's a word, that's a word that exists, come on brain, you can do it. And upon shop down, <laughs> down a nondescript back alley. The broker had no idea of its value, so I was able to purchase it for a mere 55 shillings. Talking about that 55? Talking about that free 99? <laughs> How honorable of you. And until today, it has been a faithful companion in every great Pag Paganini? What the fuck? Paganini inspired performance I've made. I ask you, is there reason to live in this world void of music? To tolerate this blanched existence? No. There is none. Um, Mr. Sloan's? What, dear madam? What? My thoughts are preoccupied with fancies of release from the dull routine. Well, it's about the violin. It looks... very different to normal, don't you think? Hmm? What do you mean, Mrs. Sato? Oh, Susie's right! I mean, I didn't even get a good fucking look at the thing, so I don't even know what you're talking about. Yes. The tone of the wood is completely different. Oh. Well, yeah, it's... Oh, I thought that was just the cat fucking it up. So, what... So, what is it? Is it made out of the wrong wood? And that's not all. I'm sure there was no crack here before. Wait. It, it's not even the right size, is it? What's this? You saying someone fucking stole our shit? I'm terribly sorry to tell you this, Mr. Sloans, but that instrument isn't a violin at all. It's a guitar. I believe. It's an entirely different instrument called a viola. Wh what? Oh, Mr. Sloans, are you all right? You're right. You're quite right. This isn't my faithful Stravid Stradved Babada. So what? What pray? Is this piece of stringed f flatsum? Floatsum? Flatsum? Floatsum? Floatsum. Floatsum and jetsum. Not your faithful performance partner, then. Hmm. Oh, I see what must have happened. You do, Iris? This is just a simple mix up. Sounds like Iris might be able to tell us exactly what happened if we ask her. Iris, what did you do? What did you do, Iris? Did you... Did you... Did your pawn broke the violin and then got a viola back? What do you mean by a mix-up, Iris? What are you talking about? Well, you see, this violin- sorry, this viola, I mean. Was at Windy Banks until last week. At a pawnbroker's? Not Mr. Sloan's beloved musical partner. 
There's a proverb from the East, with which you are no doubt familiar, my dear fellows. Always let a beloved children wait, what? Always let a beloved child travel. Yes, indeed. What? <laughs> that sounds stupid. So you send your beloved violin to the palm to the pawnbrokers in hopes that it would experience personal growth? Oh, what a wonderful idea. Last week I pawned my great anti antilata that that the uh, fuck fuck scope, whatever, telescope. In order to realize my precious, wow! In order to realize, realize, in order to release my precious instrument, but it would appear Mr. Windybank mistakenly fr uh, furnished me with this tawdy fiddle instead. But my ears cannot be deceived by the hollow. <laughs> they can't be deceived. But you sat here and got all depressed over it, <laughs> and you're like, life is over. I should just kill myself. <laughs> But my ears cannot be deceived by the hollow trim, trimbre, trimbre, trim, whatever, of the piece of timber. No, but your every sense was deceived by the fact that it just had strings. Pshaw. <laughs> Pshaw, yeah. A fine state of affairs this is. And why I always say, and, and why I always say, Mr. Narahodo. Never trust a pawnbroker. They will try to fiddle you every time. But earlier you told us that you can think of Pawnbroker as an extremely secure vault. Come, Mr. Narahodo. Dilly dallying will get you nowhere. You know, dilly dallying shilly shilly, right? Ain't that right, Tifa? <laughs> Sorry? Crunching your toast with that vacant aspect. Freshing, 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 freshing? What the fuck? Freshing your coffee so obstutely. Obstutely. I can't say the fucking word. Jesus. Are you not a little embarrassed by your own conduct, considering the urgency of which we are faced? You must visit Mr. Wendy Bakes, but I fucking hate the name already. I hate it so much. Wait a minute. Is Miss. Mmm. Is Mr. Wendy Banks gonna be some type of descendant of, uh, of what's her name? Miss Windbags, right? Old Hag, whatever fuck her name was from, uh, from Phoenix Wright. <laughs> uh, uh, we must visit Mr. Wendy Banks. Uh, can't even, can't even fucking speak. Mr. Wendy Banks brokery at once. That's right, isn't it, Mr. Slums? Precisely, Mrs. Sato. Without a moment of delay. But I haven't finished my bacon and eggs. My bacon. My dear fellow, surely you do you do not still intend to crunch your bacon with an increasingly vacant aspect, to fresh your eggs ever more obtusely. Alright, alright. Say no more. Let's go then. Motherfuckers can't just eat breakfast nowadays. Don't worry, Bruno. I'll be I'll be happy to heat it up for you again later. But that's when it's the worst. Reheating the food. Oh, thank you, Iris. As it happens, I'm rather, I'm rather, uh, fuck, damn it. I'm rather curious to see what a British pawnbroker looks like. I don't think we have anything else to talk about, right? Yeah. Let's get going. Oh, we can go to Baker Street. Directly to the pawnbroker or Baker Street. Baker Street. I wonder what's going on out here in Baker Street. I guess this is where we live, right? Pawnbroker's just right here. I guess I'll just check outside. Look at all the different things in the windows of the shop. Ah, that's Wendy Banks. The pawnbroker, eh? Looks much smarter than a pawnbroker in Japan, doesn't it? A building looks much smarter? Okay, well, I guess. I, I guess I see what you mean, all right? Yes, you're right. I find pawn shops at home rather inapproachable, personally. Maybe because it's some dude, like, just collapsing his hands together going, Yes, yes, sell me your things. Hmm, yes, buy my things. Someone else had this before you. It might have cooties on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think every pawn broker is. You know, just exactly what Malcolm Moore said, right? It smells like R. Kelly sheets. Piss. 
Fuck it, it was 99 cents. <laughs> it reminds me of tearful parting with my favorite fountain pen. I felt so merciful. What doesn't kill us makes us stronger, Mr. Narahodo. Poor you. Poor you and your fucking pen. You fucking loser. My favorite fountain pen! I loved this pen since I was a child. Fifteenth of April, Wendy Banks Pawn Brokery. So this is a British pawn brokery. Oh my, there are all sorts of tools and contraptions in here that I've never laid eyes on. I'm sorry, I fucked that up. That I never laid eyes on before. Ah, oh, Susado-san, and the spark of wonder in your eyes. You can't wait to score the shelves, can you? I get the impression you enjoy places like these. Oh yes, I don't know why, but seeing such a seeing such a lot of things I do not understand is a real thrill for me. Okay? My dear fellows, let us not forget why we're here. Oh, Mr. Schlums! Did you really have to dress up all the way to just go downstairs? <laughs> we are calling on matters of business, not pleasure. Excuse me, speak for yourself, Schlums. My pleasure is my business. Hey, hey. <laughs> and clearly Mr. Sloan's means business to, uh, too, judging by the sparks of fury in his eyes. Oh, Mr. Sloan, sure. Welcome back. Did you hear the brazen welcome? Well, yes. We're, we're potential customers, after all. We are disgruntled customers, Mr. Narahodo. And it's time to inform Mr. Wendy Banks of our ire. Come! The fight is afoot. I mean, I love how he just walked up to us and didn't say anything, but I mean, okay. It's kind of weird. <laughs> Tell me, sir. How much does this go for? Hmm, Mr. Wendy Banks, about this. Hmm, let me see. I'll give you trepence for it. No, no, I don't want to pawn it. Oh, okay. All right. Naturally, you will recall this, which I retrieved from you some days ago. Yes? This second-rate fiddle is not my faithful instrument, Mr. Wendy Banks. The color of the wood is different, it has it has holes in it. It's never even it's not even the same size. A wonderful summary of our observations, Mr. Slums. I'm so very sorry, sir. How utterly forgivable of me. An inexcusable mistake for a pawnbroker. There's only one way to make amends. I will suck your dick for you. <laughs> Is that a gun? Oh! What are you doing? <laughs> I shall take my own life. I really... Listen. It's no joke. But I'm about to start joking a bit. I really hope Schlums goes. Do it, coward. I... Don't think that will be necessary. Do you? Damn it! <laughs> I would have loved if Schlums just looked at him and went, Do it. You won't. <laughs> if I may just say one thing before I pop off. Man, I'm about to bust. <laughs> uh, yeah? It was you, sir, Mr. Sloan, who took it upon himself to remove the item the other day, I believe. Sorry? As I recall... I entered the storeroom to fetch your violin when I heard... Ah, oh, here it is. You... you did? And when I turned to convert you... To convert you, my bad. To controvert... Controvert. To controvert you, you had taken the viola and left, sir. Viola, my bad, viola. Viola, viola, whatever. However, there can be no doubt that the blame lies firmly at my own door for allowing you to leave. 
so I shall not grumble or grows or grows grows growls any longer. May this guilt die with me. No, 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 no! Stop, my dear fellow. The fault is mine. Jesus, man, you all right? Phew! It would appear that the fight is over. I do humbly apologize, Mr. Winnie Banks. Evidently, my questionable disposition... Per fuck, damn it. Big-ass words. <laughs> Evidently, my questionable dispositions predicted this tragedy. You could have just left it at, I'm sorry, dude, my fault. Well, you wouldn't be Mr. Herlock Schloons without that questionable disposition now, would you? Does anyone actually talk like this nowadays? Like, I get that this is ye the London, right? But no one talks like this nowadays. Oh, yes. Your indistinguishable, indistinguishable disposition. <laughs> what? Uh, I do believe you may be right, sir. It's either laugh or cry, I suppose. Or die. <laughs> what Mr. Wendy Banks was trying to do, just pop off as he puts it. You are, it must be said, one of the more challenging customers. I need to remind you of the peculiar collection of items you bought through my door in the past. Oh? Peculiar items? Yes, yeah, Sasato, don't you know? Like a flashlight, a blow-up doll, uh, this crazy machine with like a piston on it. <laughs> it was self-cleaning. And the extremes, ma'am. For example, the unpublished manuscripts of an eponymous... Fuck. Epon hmm. Words. Eponymous. I believe that's how you say that, right? Eponymous works. The novels of Herlock Schloms. Or some such. Oh my! A new full-fledged novel! And unpublished? A story I have yet to read, you mean? <sighs> Forgive me! Wait, before you die, you must tell me- <laughs> Wait, not- not fucking- not- no, don't do that, it's- alright, but before you do that. Tell me about the unpublished story. I must know more. Tell me everything. Wow, Sasada sounds really fired up now. Is there really an, an unpublished story under this very roof? Well, one day the gentleman here brought in an old metal chest, you see. I should like to entrust this with. Uh, I, should, uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I should like to entrust this to your care for a while, Mr. Winnie Banks. Hmm. For a chest like that, one shilling, sir. Now the furthering more. It has to something of great value indeed. The latest manuscript, recounting the adventures of one Mr. Herlock Schloes. I beg your pardon, a manuscript? You wish to dis uh, d deposit a manuscript? Indeed I do, for I am confident it will be quite safe here. And that was that. As such, Mr. Sloan's latest tale of otherworldly mystery lies dormant in my storeroom. Mr. Sloan's, is that really true? Do I sense that someone doesn't want to talk about this? I continue to pay your fee, do I not? And kindly continue your store. Uh, kindly, uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> kindly continue to store my belongings securely. Of course, sir. Of course. The sa <laughs> they're safe and sound with me, I assure you, on my life. This is a very strange... <laughs> He's very, very strange guy. Takes his job seriously. I wonder, can I ask you something? About a gentleman from the East, I see. Yes, that subtle, that subtle suit. I suppose I could offer you sixpence for it. Without wishing to offend, the tone is somewhat dull. Uh, sorry? <laughs> but for your splendid attire, ma'am, five guineas, no less. The colors are exquisite, the designs, exotic, eastern art style at its finest, may I say. 
Oh my, five guineas, you say? How interesting. Why do I feel like I, su I suffered some sort of defeat here? Actually, I was hoping to ask you about your business. I've heard it said that pawnbrokers are used rather like banks here in London. Yes, sir, indeed. Many of my customers utilize the establishment as you describe. I appraised their items and offered them appropriate loan in two months of, secu of secure storage. Or stowage, as he puts it. If in that time they repay the original sum to me plus the agreed interest, their items are happily returned. But what happens if they don't pay you the money? Then it's mine and I keep it. <laughs> then the items are offered for sale in my shop, as you can see on the shelves behind me. So you never sell items before the two months have passed then? That's right, ma'am. That's right. Which means some considerable responsibility rests on my shoulders. Should a customer presage belongings be lost, the only rep uh, recom damn it, the only recompense words, <laughs> the only recompense for me is to end it all. <laughs> Jesus. The very idea, of Mr. Wendy Banks, is an absurdity. One should never talk of one's demise so casually. Says the man who was telling us of all the good days to die <laughs> only this morning. Jesus. Let us not forget that I have already helped you take measures to ensure such a tragedy never occurs. Oh, what sort of measures? I engineered a simple device which Mr. Winnie Banks has installed here in his shop. I call it the Red Handed Recorder. Is it a camera? Is that not so, Mr. Winnie Banks? <laughs> what was that deep sigh about? What happened? Did you sell it? Please don't tell me you sold it. What on earth is a red-handed recorder? Use your eyes, my dear fellow. There are two just below the ceiling. Oh, I see what ha- I see what have- oh, damn it, I can't read it. I see what appears to be a camera attached to some sort of timing device. Very astute. It is indeed a camera, furnished with some hundred pieces of celluloid film. And, every 30 minutes precisely, the camera automatically records the appearance of the shop. Here, I have an example I can show you. Ah, yes. A print from the camera set to record, uh, six to record the activity at the shop counter. I developed a special type of film so sensitive it produces a crystal clear image even in the darkness. Really? That's extraordinary. Yes, you can clearly see the counter and the door behind it. And the picture of the dog on the desk. So you see, were someone to enter the premise with ill intent, his identity would be summarily. That is a word. <laughs> I can't say it, but I know what it is. His identity would be exposed. But, did you not say that the f photographic prints were taken at 30 minute intervals? Indeed, as you say, my dear madam. And what if the incident were to occur, uh, occur, why is it like that, were to occur between the times? One can only say, that would be a cruel twist of fate. Hmm. I must confess, your devices have been giving me some cause of distress lately. I beg your pardon, Mr. Winniebanks? Surely there's anything but distressing. Reassuring is the word. It's the cause of the film, sir. You must graciously place not one, but two cameras at my shop, after all. Which means I must pay for nigh... Nigh... Wow. I must pay for nigh on 100 utterly useless prints every single day. I'm afraid the cause of the film will break me before I'm very much older. Nevertheless, a small price to pay to ensure the safety of my preferred pawn brokery now. My dear fellows, we verge on an age where safety and security comes at a price. Speaking about safety and security at a price, have you guys ever heard of ExpressVPN? <laughs> 
This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. <laughs> you want to watch Friends? They won't let you watch Friends because you live in fucking England or some shit? Get ExpressVPN today. Just just type in the code I sold my soul 123 <laughs> and you'll get a free month for some bullshit. Oh, heavens help us. VPNs are good though. They are. Now then, Mr. Sloans, allow me to return your precious violin. Ooh, look at that cherry red on that shit. That actually looks really nice. Oh, the very thing. Thank you, Mr. Wendy Banks. And somehow you didn't know the other one wasn't your violin when this one looks so goddamn nice? Perhaps this may mark the end of the peculiar items you try to pop. Hmm. Because if anything were to happen to one of them, this would be the only answer. <laughs> I really think you ought to stop waving that gun around. Someone could get hurt. Fear not. Sorry? I've only loaded a single bullet, so no one but myself could possibly be harmed. That is not really what I meant. Good day to you, then. Mr. Winnie Banks. It's been a pleasure as always, Mr. Sloops. So, Mr. Nanahoda. Now we can explore at least. What, explore in here? What do you want to explore? What do you want to get? What, what's in here? I see Miss Dimitrescu's fucking cap over here. A sign that says something. A human skull. Right. Pinocchio. Just hanging out over here. The Thinker! Hey, look at that! What an assortment of things that, that are on the shelves here. Crockery, footwear, clocks, and watches. Almost anything you can imagine. Those are for, those are for, uh, forfeiting items offered by sale by the pawnbroker. What does that really mean, though? When you pawn or co clo mm, co mm, I can't mm, that is a word that I can't say. Coquilly shit. <laughs> Or pop an item, the broker loans you money against its worth. He stores the item for an agreed period of time, after which the loan must be repaid. If not, he is free to display in his shop for sale, at a price of his choosing. Oh yes, now that you explained it, I've noticed little price tags on everything. Of course, simply, uh, simply by paying the agreed interest on the loan, one can extend the period of the safekeeping. So... May may pawn the black garbs of yours without fear, my dear fellow. Everybody hate my clothes, man. What's wrong with my clothes? Everybody hate my clothes. Does that mean they would hate? They probably wouldn't even hate Cosmo's clothes if he if Cosmo's here. They wouldn't be giving him shit, probably. My treasure university uniform? Never. And it embodies my student spirit. Hmm. Well, I thought I can get some fun dialogue from the thinker here uh let's see uh, there's this fucking this thing that obviously just stands out look at this what could this lovely big shiny box be that my dear madam is a music box surely you have such a thing in your own country oh my yes but i never but i certainly never seen one so large before shall we listen a while Hmm. Ah, what a sublime sound. It's like the music of angels. I never heard anything like it before in my life. This peculiar specimen is of a larger variety, commonly found in public houses and restaurants. There's a metal disc inside on which the notes to be... Wow. There's a metal disc inside on... Isn't this spelt with a C? I'm sorry, that really, that really got me for a moment. There's a metal disc inside on, on which the notes, on which the notes to be played are recorded. Simply by replacing the disc with another, any music you can, uh, you can, you care to imagine, can be played. My goodness. What a simply delightful machine. Indeed. 
though their popularity has waned recently with the development of the gramophone, of course. Science and technology advance at such at an overwhelming pace. All right. Well, I think that's everything to look here. I mean, there's the skull, but it's a it's a skull. I mean, eh, they might say something funny about it. Seems to be a little door hidden behind the curtains there. Oh, I didn't mean to look at that. That leads to the storage room, where Mr. Winnie Biggs keeps articles that are currently in pawn. Oh, I see. There's nothing of particular interesting inside. I certainly wouldn't recommend any luxurious activities. Recommended or not, it's not something I tend to do. There's but one key, and Mr. Winnebakes keep it in his pocket. Keeps it in his pocket at all times. Before he sleeps, he places it into a small pot, which he slides under his pillow. How, how on earth did you know about that, Mr. Sloans? I am a detective, sir. It's my business to know what others do not. I'm frequently assailed by information. Assailed? Yeah, assailed by information that I neither care for nor wish to retain. Mr. Sloams, you're a wonder. And the prime suspect of the pawn brokery has ever burgled. <laughs> like, for real. I hear telling the man's whole secrets. Alright. Time to stop looking around. Guess we can head back up. Maybe something's happening on Baker Street? Oh. I thought if I walked outside of Baker Street, something funny would happen. I did not mean to come up to my legal place. I meant to head to Slum Suite, actually. We have returned! Where the hell are you, Iris? Huh. Okay, well, I guess I'll just head to, uh, my place, then. Talk to me. Can it really be, uh, can it really be that we've been in Great Britain for two months already? Yes, it's gone by in a flash, hasn't it? And what an English gentleman you've... You, tra you trailed off there, Sasato. What are you gonna say? I'm sorry. When I thought it through, I realized it's not all that true, actually. I simply don't feel that any Britishness has really rubbed off on you. Says the woman parading around in a fucking kimono. Nor you, to be honest. Well, that's obviously because... Yes, I know. Without a doubt, it's your kimono. <laughs> it most certainly stands out. Oh, but it's pretty, though. I like it. I do adore the attire of English ladies. It's quite delightful. But somehow, I just don't feel ready to abandon my Japanese dress just yet. I wonder how susano song would look in Western clothes. That'd be interesting to see. That was cool. Alright, so what the hell are we doing? I, I guess I'll head back to the pawn brokery and, and just look around a little bit more. There's something here. Let's see. Look at the enormous ledger open, uh, open on the counter there. Mr. Winnie Bakes is, if nothing else, very peculiar about recording all the items he accepts. He has to be, otherwise he'd get himself into all sorts of trouble. Which might explain the thing that catches my eye far more than the ledger. The gun? <laughs> like, this revolver here. Do not entertain even a single thought of, of pilfering an article herein, my dear fellow. Hmm? Speak English, Shlomes. You really just gave me a stroke reading that. I assure you, Mr. Winnebanks would not hesitate to draw that weapon with the with the speed, uh, with the speed, delaying, delaying his portly size. Oh, you, you don't mean he blow his brains out? Indeed, <laughs> just so casually. Oh, you mean blow his brains out? Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> In recompense for his blunder. Oh my. But in any case, of course we would never do such a thing. How could you even suggest it? Okay, well... Is that like the only other thing to look at?
Oh, this thing here that stands out too. Is this a television? Now, what do you suppose this rather enormous machine here does? It seems to have two little windows for looking through. Oh, it's, uh, it's one of those picto boxes, whatever the hell. Let me tell you, my dear fellows. What are you looking for is a stereoscope. A stereo? Fascinating. Exactly named, I assure you. Look through the eyepiece and see for yourself. Oh, I should be delighted to. Excuse me a moment while I just have a look. Just before you do, there's something I should point out. My dear fellows, in order to see the image properly, stereosco uh, stereoscopically, that is a big ass word, <laughs> as it were, you need to be cross eyed. What? However, if that is beyond you, it is a little consequence today. Alright then, I'm gonna try it. You don't need to be cross eyed, don't listen to him, Cesado. Mr. Narahodo, you must see at once. Uh, uh, Alright then. So I need to be cross eyed, like I'm trying to look at my own nose. Oh, that's what he meant by cross eyed. I thought he meant like cross eyed, cross eyed. Wait a minute. Isn't that the girl from the stands? I don't believe it. It's just a photographic print, but it seems like you can reach out and touch it. Yes, the sense of death is startling, is it not? Stereoscopes are one of London's many fads. It's a fad, it'll never go nowhere. You know, I think they call it 3D, something about a movie and blue people, and then something about TVs that can do it or some bullshit, and something about special glasses for your gaming console or something that you can play in 3D. Something about a handheld where you just turn it up and you look at it. <laughs> it's a, it's a fad. <laughs> Why are people meddling with such black magic? It's no magic, my dear madam. It is, well, science. Far too complicated to explain at present. We shall save this lesson for another day. Oh, okay. All right, anything else to check in here? The date? That's on a calendar you could sit you can easily miss. April fifteenth uh, of April, today's date. Yes. It's not for sale, I must point out. It is an Eastern style page a day calendar. Every night at midnight I tear off the front page to reveal the following day's date. The perfect calendar for a terry <laughs> for a tear away fellow such as yourself, Mr. Winnie Bank. So Alright, let me get this straight. Mm. Well, I mean, I... I was gonna say him buying film for the photographs is too much for him, but buying paper for his calendar isn't. But then I guess you kind of just buy them in bulk, right? Like, you only need you only need 365 or 366, right? Yeah, 366. Um, if it's a leap year, right? <laughs> you know? The perfect, uh, the perfect calendar for the tearaway fa- Oh yeah, I read that already. Shit. And who was it you walked out here with the wrong- Wait, what? And who was it who walked out of here with the wrong violin before? Well, when the agreed storage period has passed without repayment, articles are forbidden- Are for forbidden, my bad. Are forfeited, you see? So I have to keep a close eye on the date. It's something of a paperwork obsession, you might say. Paperwork? Why'd I say that? Pawnbroker. <laughs> Oh yes, I can see you're very dedicated to your job. Put the gun down, please. <laughs> Alright. Ooh, what's this? Look at this. Whatever it could be used for. Hmm. Nah. I got no idea. Doesn't it look like a... Like a Morse code machine? There's a small catch just here. We're gonna open it, aren't we? Maybe we shouldn't. 
Oh my, that's amazing. Some sort of spring-loaded mechanism. Which we never managed to pull back to the way... <laughs> which we never managed to put back to the way it was before. Oh, shit. Hmm? What are you two doing? What? Us? Nothing? Nothing at all? I didn't... I didn't break anything. Whatever device this is, it seems to have a pair of little windows to look through. I feel as though I've seen it, something similar to this elsewhere. What? <laughs> what? Only trumpets for it. That ain't fair, you know it? The article is barely worn a penny, miss. Uh, worn a penny? What am I saying? The article is barely worth a penny, miss. I cannot afford more. Afford? Offer. Yeah. I'm gonna take a sip of my water now. Maybe I should just... Slow down for a bit. <laughs> you try reading it out loud. At a nice pace for everyone to enjoy. It's not as easy as it seems. A lot of, a lot of performance anxiety going through this body right now. <laughs> Alright. Sounds like there's an argument brewing over there by the counter. Come on, that can't be right. Have you ever heard of proper butchers at... Wait, what? Have you ever... Have you ever had a proper butcher's at all? At it. What? <laughs> I see all I need to see, young girl. Ah, shit. Wait. Don't I know you? I'm sure I recognize her. Oh, yeah, it's the young lady. From Mr. Gild Mr. McGilda's trial two months ago. Her name? Gina Lestrade, my lord. She's a chancer. Chancer? Chaser. Chancer? Chancer. Earning her crust among large crowds. Revealing people of their purses. Revealing? Re re oh, shit. <laughs> Relieving. Relieving. Fucking damn it. <laughs> What's commonly called a pickpocket. Or a street urchin. She has a gun! <laughs> Watch out! Oh, hey, Gina. Gordon Bennett, you lot. Why do you still have that? I thought it was taken away from you. Miss Lestrade, I hope you've been well. Uh, what? You remember me then, do you? Well, I remember being completely surrounded by smoke, that's for sure. So, what are you doing here? Down and out. Like the rest of us, nothing to eat. Come to pop the black weasel. Sorry, coat I've got. What's it about black uniform that makes everyone comment on it? What's wrong with my uniform? Why are you all hating on me? Ah, uh, good day. Unless I'm much mistaken. You, uh, you, uh, shit. <laughs> I had a stroke reading that. You be the young pickpocket who stole our experimental smoke grenade launcher. Uh, Mr. Shlomes. So, you have something of value to pawn, do you? Allow me to see the article. I shall negotiate with Mr. Wendy Banks on your behalf. Pull the other one. I don't need any help from some stuck up D. Stuck up D? Stuck up a D. Get out of my business. Go on. I'll make trouble for you. As you wish, Miss Lestrade. I will happily remove myself from your presence. <sighs> He's really done it. He's gone. <laughs> I'm sorry, but as I said, there really is no room for negotiation here. What is the thing he has on in his hand? <laughs> what is that thing he has in his hand? Is it... Is that a gun? Oh, some kind of metal disc? And you, go on, leave me alone. Oh, Miss Lestrade, just pretend we aren't here. We shan't be offering, uh, we shan't be offered in this, wow, what? Mm, offered, offended. <laughs> we shan't be offended in the slightest. You can't say no to Sasato, come on, look at that face. Sasato, Sasato can really stand her ground when she wants to. Whatever. All right, so, uh, what you doing here? Well, I mean, 
We know why you're here. You're trying to pawn off some shit, but, you know, what's up? Somehow I didn't really think you were that sort of person to use pawnbrokers, Miss Lestrade. Yeah, well, I am, all right. I'm a Londoner, just like everyone else. Is that a problem? No, not at all. It's just that, well... On with it. I know what you're thinking. The things probably don't even belong to her. Probably got it and died, did she? Yeah. I can see it written all over your chibi, your chibi chase. Your chevy chase, what the fuck? Alright. <laughs> well, call me chevy chase. That's okay. <laughs> Well, I might have been thinking something along those lines. You're not going to deny it, Mr. Nodoho, though. Of course not. All right, then. I'm just going to come out and ask you straight. Did you pot things that you steal from other people? Well, uh, I don't know about, I don't know the best way to answer that, really, but, um... Suppose, sometimes... You're not going to deny it either, Miss Lestrade. But not this time, alright? I swear. This thing belongs to me. The disc that Mr. Winniebanks is holding? Perhaps we should see what he has to say about this. Alright. Mr. Winniebanks. I mean, I would say it's somewhat of value, right? Mr. Windybanks, what exactly is the metal disc that Miss Lestrade has brought in? It seems to have hundreds of tiny hole bumps on the surface. It goes inside the music box thing. Ah, this is a music disc, you see. For use inside the music box. In a music box? What? You don't even know what a music box is? You Easterners ain't too savvy, eh? Excuse me! I don't think I need a fucking street rotin telling me how to be savvy, okay? <laughs> Tell me I'm not savvy. Which one of us crossed the fucking sea to get here? Yeah, okay, let's think about that for a moment, miss. <laughs> I know what a music box is. I just never seen one. I've seen one of the desks before. The small uh small protrusions on the metal disc encode the tune. <clears throat> I felt some type of way when I read that. <laughs> the small protrusions on the metal disc encode the tune to be played by the music box. You simply insert the disc and set the machine going. And beautiful music plays. It's so incredible. Tell us, what tune is on this disc? Well, I'm afraid I couldn't tell you that. There's so many different types of music box, uh, of music box you see. British made, German, Swish. I have no way of knowing which peculiar, what peculiar, what particular machine this disc was made for. Oh, I see. And that is in a nutshell. I wouldn't have any customers for an item like this, even if the young lady forfeited it. Really, I'm already offering more than I should, uh, more than I should at a penny. That's a pack of lies. Uh, he told me, he told me he did. What? <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a packet of lies. He told me he did. He said he was. Well, he he who? N never you mind. It just ain't right. That all. But this is worth good money. I know it is. Well then, you have to try your luck at another pawnbroker, won't you? Um. All right. Sorry, Gina. She's been in before, of course. This little tattered, <laughs> tattered dim, tattered dim, dim lion. What? Tattered dim, dim, dimalion, dimalion, dimalion. That that is a word that is new to me. I see. I brought some dubious articles of others. What? I'm sorry. Some dubious articles or others with her or other what the fuck and brought some dubious articles or other with her every single time i might add that is a weird way to awarding that okay dubious dubious article or other 
Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, so like something or other. Alright. Just didn't roll off the tongue, you know? Dubious? What are you trying to say? I'm an honest customer, me. So, is there something dubious about this disc she brought in today? Well, if only it were that simple. Sorry, what do you mean? What she actually brought in was a storage ticket. Uh, a storage ticket? So... Mr. Strahd has actually come to redeem an article for me today? Is that it? Yeah, that's right. A girl like me has a lot of stuff. What needs storing? Alright. Yeah, that's definitely dubious. The article in question would have been forfeited at midnight tonight. But, as she gave me the ticket for it, and repaid both the loan and the interest, I was obliged to return the article to her. But, what's the article? Do tell us, Mr. Winnie Banks. The little scamp is wearing it, madam. The coat? The overcoat? Yeah, she wasn't wearing it before, now that I think about it. It is a rather clean coat. I mean, like... Hmm. Alright. Like, she's not... I mean, I I guess she's supposed to be, like, rugged looking, right? But she really isn't. Oh my god, what the hell just happened? Did my fucking stream just, like, blink out for a moment? I definitely saw something there. Definitely saw a bit of a stutter going on. What's going on here? Uh-oh. Tonight just is not my night, is it? It seems to be, it seems to be back. For like a split second, it it went in the red for a moment. Okay. Oh, no, it's going again. Let me see something, actually. I want to check something. Because... Because I usually do not have any trouble when it comes to streaming, for the most part. Um... Give me a quick second. I will be right back.
All right, I am back. Hopefully, I fixed the issue a bit. Fucking, I, mm. I really don't know what the fuck's going on with my computer tonight. Okay, yeah, it seems like I seems like I fixed it for now. I really don't know what the hell's going on. It's like these things keep like popping back up. What the hell are these? One time applications. What the fuck and why? Why is it doing that? You know, everything was fine until I updated Windows. Cause we all know Windows Windows just love fucking you over the moment you update it. Jesus, god damn it. Alright. Hopefully I've uh, made it a little bit better now though. Alright, what the hell were you saying, Gina? What's wrong with it? It fits, don't it? I mean it's mine, so of course it does. So what about the disc then? How does that all come to this? Ah, uh, the disc is something else. A new article to pawn if the girl and I can agree on a price. I'm confused. I thought you said that Miss Lestrade brought in a storage ticket. It's really quite simple. Yes, the child brought me a storage ticket, and the money owed, uh, many, and the money owed on it, as you say. For this heavy black coat, which you returned to her care. As, uh, as I understand it. That's right, yes. And rather unsurprisingly, as soon as the little rough <laughs> ragamuffin put the thing on, she went rifling through the pockets. Oh, you, you mean... What? Don't you know it's rude to stare at a lady? Sorry. Oh, I see. So it came from the pocket of the overcoat, did it? If you mean this disc, then yes. Exactly, man. And she immediately tried to pawn it. For quite a high price as well. This is all rather suspicious, I think. Give it up. I'm just trying to pawn something that anyone else would have. Miss Lestrade, may I ask who, dis who deposited the co overcoat here in the first place? Uh, well, um, me? It doesn't really appear to be your size. Me old man! It's me old man's, ain't it? Is it Miss Lestrade? Yes. This is definitely all rather suspicious. One may call her... sauce. Out of the way, please! Oh... My God, this has to be the most Chad Wellington looking motherfucker in this game. Oh, <laughs> Chad Wellington has returned, it seems. You can never escape the Chad. Mm, yes, indeed. Who's this, who's this picture postcard English gentleman? Please say your name is Chad. Oh my God. Good day to you, ladies and gentlemen. What's your problem? There's no problem, as long as you remove yourself. I have a matter to discuss with the perpetrator. Uh, uh, damn it. Propertrator. I can't even say the fucking word. Propertier. That's the word, right? And if you intend to make a problem of it, I shall see you outside, little girl. For the hidings you deserve. For the hiding you deserve. Jesus! He said, fuck out my way or I'll remove you. Look, ain't it obvious? I ain't done talking when I, uh, uh, with him yet. If you think you're such a gent, you should know to wait your turn. Well, you are an impudent little brat, aren't you? As well as a pickpocket. Who are you? And how you know who I am? The question is, 
How do you not know who I am? I am Chad Wellington, the most esteemed. You have the courtesy even to remember the faces of your victims, it seems. Ooh, what? You mean, uh, from you? Broker. Uh, yes, sir. I believe this filthy pocket thief has just has just redeemed an article from you, no? Y yes, um... The article in question belongs to me. I demand for it to be returned at once. Oh my. Now that's a lie. What are you trying to pull? Give me back my overcoat, you wartzel. <laughs> and needless to say. Any music box disc too. You can't have it. You just can't. It's my old man's, or it was. Now it's mine. Goodness, Mr. Narahoto. Jesus. This is a very awkward situation. My man came in here said, I'm, he said, I don't care who you are. I'll kick your ass. <laughs> and then started Jojo posing. Yes. I think perhaps we should hear both their sides a in a little bit more detail. Come on, guys. Fess up. Talk to me. Miss Lestrade, it's what the gentleman is saying. What do you think? It's all lies, ain't it obvious? I swear on my life. I never laid eyes on the dandy before. Let's hear it now, you little ragamuffin. You stole it, didn't you? That ticket you brought in here just now? No, I swear it. I swear to God. It was barely an hour ago. I was walking along the streets, minding my own business. When this little gutter <laughs> gutterling... <laughs> Jesus. They're just bashing on her. She ain't that bad, right? <laughs> when this little gutterling ran into me, I knew at once what had, to hap uh, what had happened. I've been robbed yet again, I thought to myself. Those wretched pickpockets. Yet again? Oh yes, as you can see, I'm a man of impeccable style. Hmm, yes, my style is, uh, top notch. This isn't the first time I've been targeted by these black. Uh, fuck. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, that came out wrong. <laughs> by these. Oh uh, wow, I had to stop myself there because I make because I was about to. <laughs> I was about to mix the words, back and slums together, and you can see how that wouldn't have turned out well. Wow! <laughs> Jesus! Uh... By these back slum scoundrels. That's a trap. That was a trap that was set up for me. Oh man. Woo! <laughs> That's not a good one. Now then, relinquish my overcoat. Come along now, Miss Lestrade. Get the good gentleman his coat back. If you're gonna cause trouble, I shall have no choice but to call the police. Hold on! Why is everyone thinking it's me? It just looks like... <clears throat> just like at this dandy cove. <laughs> dandy cove? What the fu- okay. And you think I'm the dodgy one? I'm sorry, but no one's gonna believe you. Well, what about evidence? Where's your evidence that I stole something from you? Come on, let's see it. Oh, I have evidence, naturally. I was looking at my fucking screen, and I was like, does this guy have, like, a beauty mark on him? And the answer is no. The answer is, for some reason, there's, like, this little dot on my screen. And I just wiped it off. <laughs> but I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Why is this beauty mark moving? Oh, I have evidence, naturally. You what? Alright, then what's the evidence? Evidence that the article Mr. Lestrade redeem actually belongs to this gentleman? Of course. We need only console Mr. Mr. Wendy Banks Ledger to know the truth. We'll be able to look up the name of the person who who, de uh, who deposited the article in the first place. Yeah, brilliant. 
I'm very sorry, but I'm afraid that won't be possible. And why the fuck not? Oh? I never ask customers' names. That's a strict policy of mine. But why not? Well now, as you can imagine, some of my customers have circumstances to consider. A great many of them prefer to maintain their anonymity. Uh, mm, I cannot say this fucking word. Yes, I see. But then, how can you know if the article belongs to the person that acts to redeem it? Oh, it's quite simple. Good, sir. Might I trouble you for the watchword associated with the, with the article in question? Of course, it's... Professor. Uh, Professor. Yes, that's right. And all the evidence, we, that's all the evidence we need. This gentleman is the rightful owner of the article, without a doubt. A watchword? Interesting. Watchwords. So, how about these watchwords, Mr. Wendybank? As I just explained, I never ask customers' names when they deposit items with me. There are many reasons why. Certainly, customers would like to keep their activity secret. <laughs> He's in the background, just fucking having a good old time. That wasn't exactly a subtle glance at Mr. Sloan's now, was it? Great detectives have no dark secrets. None at all. Yes, well, anyways, that's why I always ask for the watchword whenever I accept the new article. In many ways, it's like the secret combination of numbers used to unlock a vault. The date of the day of deposit, the description, and the watchword uniquely identifying each item. And, of course, then I get the store's ticket to the customer. If someone comes to redeem something, I ask for the ticket and the watchword. And if someone tells you the correct watchword, you return the article. That's right, sir. Yes, just as soon as, as the Resquisette fee is paid. And I have supplied you with the information you required already. But, for the, for the um, avoidance of doubt, the article in question is an overcoat, deposited two months ago on 15th of February. With the watchword of Professor. Okay, wait a minute, so if he goes through that whole song and dance to make sure that he's getting the right items out, then why did he give it to Lestrade to begin with? Wouldn't she have to have that information as well? All perfectly correct information, sir. But, how? Really, this is beyond a joke now. There's no further room for doubt. Mm. Oh, that's it? No, <laughs> nothing else? Come on, Lestrade, I'm trying to root for you here. Excuse me, but who are you? One would, ex one would expect the... Fuck, I can't, I can't even, damn it. One would expect the inquirer, <clears throat> inquirer to introduce himself first. Though clearly you are not British, so perhaps our ways are foreign to you. Oh, sorry, yes. We're from the Empire of Japan. We're studying here. Oh, yes, Japan. I've heard, I heard talks of the place. Oh my god, he started dancing. Its inhabitants live a some... <clears throat> Live on some fiery brown colored soup dress. Wait, what? Its inhabitants live on some fiery brown colored soup dressed up with exotic spices. What the fuck are you smoking? You might be thinking of somewhere else. And what's with the theatrical gestures? Perhaps, anyways, if you are a gentleman, sir. You offer your own name first, before inquiring after the name of another. Of course, yes. I'm Ryanosuke Naruhodo. I'm a lawyer. Well, a student of law, really. My name is Susano Mikoroba. I am Mr. Naruhodo's assistant. I see. 
My name is Benedict. Yes, Edgar. Eggs Benedict? Really? That's what we're going for? <laughs> mm, yes, Eggs Benedict. Nah, man. That's Chad Wellington. <laughs> I don't care what anyone says. That's this game's version of Chad Wellington. I mean, we ran into a Wellington in one of the other Phoenix Rise games, right? He was like one of the first trials. Phoenix lost his memory. He's like, mm, yes, I am... What, what, what the fuck was his name? Steve Wellington or something like that? I am sir. Or or something. It, it was something. It was something along those lines. <laughs> Edgar Benedict. Enchante? Hmm. Is that how you say that? He's so refined in how he holds himself and how he speaks, but the name is... Sus. Now, to the matter at hand. My overcoat. Return it at once. To someone with the style to carry it off. Every move he makes. Every breath he takes. I can't stand watching him. Hmm. So, let that be an end to the matter. I don't think that's your coat. <laughs> and thank you for your, uh, thank you for your, wait, what? And thank you for your custom? Really? That's how you say that? All right. Thank you for your custom, Mr. Edgar Benedict, sir. You know, it's the white top hat that ruins it. With such reasonable rates of interest, I may even decide to come back. No, That's why I hate grown-ups. I actually think it looked better on Lestrade. I like the black and green. Just cause I'm a diver, everyone thinks that it makes me a liar. And the contents of the coat's pockets, if you please, broker. But of course, sir, here's the disc for you. Just this one. Pardon, sir? Pardon? I was expecting another. Uh, that is, I deposited another. Oh! Oh, you were expecting... Mm, okay. Another disc. Oh, uh, my dear. I regret to inform you, sir, that... What was disposit... Ah, uh, uh, fuck. I keep wanting to say deposit for some reason. God, deposited. That's how you say the word. I don't know why I want to keep saying a word that doesn't even fucking exist. What was deposited with me was merely the overcoat. The disc happened to be in one of the pockets, but I was completely unaware of it until now. So, Gutterling, you're hiding more than what's rightfully you're hiding more of what's rightfully mine, are you? Says who? I don't know nothing about it. Very well. Then I shall bid you farewell. Say goodbye to style. <laughs> Say goodbye to style. Wait a minute, that disc. It's mine. Oh! What do you think you're doing, you little tramp? You've, you've drawn blood, you filthy animal. Oh my, yeah. There's blood on the disc. It's because of all those sharp little bumps. The man must have scratched his finger on them. I found it first, alright? I mean, it belongs to me old man. So, you're not having it. Boy, you! You take it. Me? If I hang on to it, they'll have- they'll have it off me- They'll have it off me again. So you keep a hold of it, okay? Miss Lestrade, I- You're making me accomplice to a crime here! I'll get deported. <laughs> Why is this so important to her? The music box disc has been entered in the court record. Or, as I like to call it, into my pocket. You there. In the black livery? Liver? Li what the fuck? Liverly? Livery? And the dicks. Mm, hand the dicks. Yep. Yep, I said that. <laughs> hand the disc to me at once. Hand the dicks over to me at once, please. No. Don't. He's lying. Grown-ups are all liars. 
But I'm a grown-up. What do I do now? How am I going to resolve this? I'll tell you how to resolve it. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm getting the fuck out of here. We gotta go. And now I'm free. And now I can just leave. Head back home. No one will ever stop me. All right, I have returned. With the disc in hand. <laughs> uh, I'm choosing her side. Wow, Mr. Strada really look, really looking daggers at the mysterious gentleman. We need to do something to calm this down before she loses control and attacks him again. Well, how the fuck am I supposed to do that? Grab the gun! <laughs> Look at those piercing eyes. He's clearly in no mood to talk. We have to do something quickly before the mysterious gentleman leaves to fetch the police or something. What the hell am I supposed to do? Hmm. Whoa. Mr. McGilded. Oh, there's a little scrap of paper stuck on the reverse side of the desk. And a scribbled word, too. It looks like somebody's name. For McGilded. McGilded? It couldn't be. But it is Mr. Narahodo. A name I shall never forget for as long as I live. But why? Why is his name on this? Mr. Broker! He's clearly at a loss here. Wait, where the fuck is Shlomes in this situation? Aren't you still over here? Help me, buddy! Damn! Uh, Mr. Shlomes? What are you examining with such a keen interest there? As you enjoy a bar... Uh, as you enjoy a bar of caramel, I see. What? Oh, I thought he just left. So... You found me at last, Mr. Narahodo. Sorry? After that young pickpocket seen see me on my way, I was forced to lurk in the shadows. Cruelly ostracized as the rest of you partook in a jovial atmosphere of fellowship. I had nothing to occupy my mind, but was too ashamed to let society see what my downfall had done to me. So faint, so faint mock interest, I pretended to examine the tedious trinkets in the in a desolate place. Whilst, whilst as you shrewdly observed, gnawing on my gnawing on my only friend I've left, the seven the seven percent solution of caramel. What the fuck? Why are you so depressing? Pray, did you claim to understand the depths of my despair, Miss Naruto? But how could you? I was so lonely, so desperately lonely. I need to feel the touch, the warmth of another. Then why on earth didn't you rejoin the conversation? Things have gone from bad to worse here, you know. Yes, I haven't heard much of your conversation. Or rather, in my craving for human contact, my ears devoured every word that was uttered. You really were sad, weren't you? Poor Mr. Slums. Don't encourage him, Sasada. What the hell? It would seem that my my inference my inferences are correct. Oh, surely you're not about to tell us. It's time for introduction, right? That you saw the entire case once again. My dear madam, sometimes I wonder. Were my genius for deduction to be come come mm, common dusted? Common dust. Yeah, that's the word. I think so. How much could I pawn it for? Seems Mr. Slows has had another another of his flash of inspirations. But who knows? If <laughs> if it will if it will help to resolve the situation between Miss Lestrade and the mysterious gentleman. What's the right thing to do here? Let's listen to it. Well, Miss Lestrade, it would appear you found yourself in something of a predicament. 
We had a bit of a situation. Where the blazes you've been? Pardon? When a lady's in trouble, a true gentleman is supposed to be there to help. Straight away. <laughs> not, not an hour later. Harsh. And who, pray tell, are you? Who are these two chat-ass motherfuckers? <laughs> Mr. Edgar Benedict. You have, in my eyes, a veritable... Mm, a, ver a veritable... A veritability. I can't even say the fucking word. Damn it. Uh, a something something. You have, in my eyes, an... An encyclopedic. Kill me, just shoot me right now. Encyclopedic array of of curiosities about your person. To say he's fucking weird, man. Nevertheless, there are two immovable consolate consolations. Conclusions I have drawn. I beg your pardon. The first is this. The true reason for your visit is is this pawnbrokery today is something you have not yet revealed. And the second is this. A considerable crime is a con contemplation, one you will or orchestrate with intent to steal a vast sum of money. Well, Mr. Benedict, what do you say to my deductions? How? You turned as white as a hard-boiled egg. It would seem that once again, Mr. Sloan's has made a flawless deduction. Just who do you think you are? Ah, yes. As I hoped. That is precisely the pained expression I was looking for. So? Shall we begin? The time has come for yet another of Herlock Shlom's logic and reasoning spectacular. The Great Deduction. The game is afoot. Topic 1. Mysterious Man's Aim First of all, we must ask ourselves, on what business do you venture to this pawnbrokery today? You claim to have to follow this pickpocket here, haven't had the redemption ticket stolen from you on the streets. But that is most certainly a lie. The real truth is something quite different. He's holding a fucking piece of paper. Where did that come from? As revealed by what you are holding in your hand. Yes. What brought you to this shop in the first place is this staff recruitment flyer. The piece of paper if you, in your hand is a staff, staff wanted advertisement from this very shop. Yet, even the most unobservant would soon realize that this man of your appearance has no need of such employ. In other words, there is some ulterior motive for your actions. Ah. Uh, the cane, which you unwittingly clutch to your person, exhibits an incontrivable contradiction. What uh, what utter rot. I've had I've had, had this cane for years. The contradiction of which I speak of, of course, is the missing fer the missing for for rule? I don't even know how to say that. The end of the walking king would be determined with the metal f for rule. For rule? For rule? Mm. For rule to protect the wooden tip. And yet, detailed analysis shows the wooden tip of the stick has been utterly bare. Therefore, there is only one conclusion. The rod that you hold in your hand, which appears to be a walking cane, is in fact no cane at all. It is a sword. You recoiled, sir. Something wrong? I will... I... Uh... And in your recoiling, you've been involved... You've in... Mm. <clears throat> inadvertently facilitated the answer of the next conundrum to present itself. You mean that ripping sound? Namely, with a troop behind the rod you bear. Yes, your reaction betrays the truth. The handle, which you evidently would like to conceal, is the key to understand this riddle, you see. From the moment I saw it, 
my suspicions were aroused. What walking cane demands such a stout handle? Amused eye. Amused eye? What the fuck? Amused eye? <laughs> but of course, as I said, this is no walking cane. No, that rod. It is a broken handle of a shovel. What? Are you insane? And now, having determined this undeniable truth, the conclusion is clear. Your true motive for coming here was to take employment at this establishment in order to excavate the ground beneath the premises. What a calculated crime you have conceived, sir. A wickedly calculated crime. Sloan, you are a special breed. The tunnel underneath the bron uh, the, the pawn broker. Eh? Topic number two, the great crime. Now, Mr. Benedict, let us continue. For we must expose the detail of this elaborate crime you have in planning. This is utterly absurd. You suggest that I, a gentleman, intend to Excavate the ground beneath this pawn brokery with a broken shovel. What on earth do you suppose? I suppose. What on earth do you propose I could expect to find there? Some long forgotten treasure, I suppose. Say for such a fanciful theory, what possible reason could I have to do as you say? Oh, but there is ample reason. As you are only too well aware, Mr. Benedict. And your fruitful glance is more telling than I could have hoped. What? Let us consider what would motivate a man to infiltrate a shop such as this and covertly dig, be cover covertly dig beneath the floor. The answer is revealed by the council notice on the counter which your eyes were inadvertently drawn. This letter gives notice to public work to public works to be carried out in a local area. And according to the enclosed plans for our upcoming sewage works, beneath the shop runs a sewer that adjacent enough that ad adjacent that adjoins another on the runs under the bank. Wait, one that runs under the bank of the opposite side of the road. Okay, yeah. This madness has entered the sewers now, has it? But excavating the ground beneath your feet, you would gain it. My bad. By excavating the ground beneath our feet, you would gain access to the waterways. That flow is very close. Prom is very close. Prom. Mm, prom mm, proximity. I can't even say the fucking word. Shoot me. Someone shoot me. What a gun now. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Flows is very close proximity to the great vault of the financial institute opposite. What are you? In summary, sir, you devised a master plan to pull off an elaborate bank robbery. You dent of you dent of the ground tunnel. Wait, you dent of the ground tunnels? What the fuck? Okay. Master plan. This guy. Which brings up last to the final chapter of this lurid, lurid, lurid scheme. With what plunder did the thief hope to make off from the underground vault of the bank? Are you quite serious? Having consulted with Scotland Yard some days ago, I happen to know the answer. But naturally, the answer is no secret to you, is it, Mr. Benedict? I have no idea what you're talking about. Allow me to present a further interesting piece of evidence. You see, the picture postcard tells us all we need to know. Postcard of great exhibition. I'm afraid you've quite lost me. Currently, in the final stages of preparation, the great exhibition will soon be underway. And the government has provided extra funds to complete its centerpiece, the Crystal Tower. Funds that currently sit in the vault of the bank on the other side of the road. Pardon? Yes, the considerable crime you have been contemplating. is the theft of that which sits in the vault of the bank, the very special reserve funds for the Great Exhibition. Of course, that is top secret police information, so keep it under your hat, please. 
So you're just shouting it to the heavens? Okay. Alright. Thus concludes Herlock Shalom's great deduction of this pawnbroken puzzle. Um, Mr. Sloams. Well, Mr. Narahoto? An impressively upbeat deduction for a detective racked with loneliness, would you not agree? <laughs> Was it true what you said about the bank over the road and what it has in its vault? Indeed, those few, know, those few know of his existence. It is one of the government's most closely guarded secrets. And you're just shouting it for everyone to fucking hear? Gregson told me, in the strictest confidence. But you just announced it to everyone here, rather loudly, in fact. Oh. And it was such a big secret. How would Mr. Benedict have come to find it out? There can be one explanation for that. Clearly, it is because the man is a criminal. But what if he didn't know anything about the money in the vault? If he's a criminal, you say? Then buying a brand new shovel is <laughs> sure, sure be the first thing he does now that you revealed the secret. Oh. Or if he doesn't, maybe Mr. Windbag will. <laughs> maybe Mr. Windy Bat, Windy Banks will. He already has plenty of shovels here, after all. On my life! I assure you I am not so unscrupulous. Hmm, well, hopefully, this has taught you a valuable lesson. This is information must be handled with the utmost of care. You're, you're a fucking moron. One can never be sure that someone privy to secrets won't disclose them. And once the word is out, it's out. Perhaps I'll thank twice before confiding in you next time, Mr. Shalom's. An excellent idea, Mr. Nahodo. An excellent idea. <laughs> you fucking asshole. Well then, Mr. Nahodo, you know what to do, I'm sure. Yeah, let's listen to the great deduction again and see what the hell is wrong with it. Very well then, let us start once more from the beginning. Of Herlock Shalom's magnificent logic and reasoning spectacular. Let's get it over with. Course correction. Hold it, Shloms. Alright. I'll tell you right now, me, myself, I haven't figured any of this shit out, but we're gonna figure it out here. Okay. Clearly, so have followed the pickpocket here, having. Okay, claim to have followed the pickpocket here, claiming you've been robbed. But then, now you're a liar. We can tell that you're a liar because, as revealed, as revealed by this, yes, what you bought in the shop in the first place, the flyer. So, by Mr. Sloan's reasoning, Mr. Benedict came here in order to apply for a job so he could dig down through the floor. Yep, in an attempt to tunnel to the sewers to gain access to the money in the vault in the bank across the road. God damn it, that's a mouthful. But he wouldn't get very far with a broken shovel, would he? No, I think it's fair to say his motives lie elsewhere. The question is where? What did Mr. Benedict... <clears throat> why did... Why did... Mm, my bad. What did Mr. B what did brain... Mm, what did bring... What the fuck? What did bring Mr. Benedict here at the... That... That... Okay. That is a weird way to word that. Alright. What would bring him here? Let's see. Recruitment flyer. Ooh, scribbled writing. Take that! Those notes were scrawled by someone famous, and as, su and as such, are worth a considerable sum of money. The fact that you handled the paper on which they are written with gloves only proves my theory. So you came here today with the intention of pawning it for as much as the broker would give you. What spectacular, <clears throat> what spectacular contrived logic led you to this mindless conclusion? Oh, well, um, supposed to be logic and reasoning spectacular, so I thought I'd contribute to the show. 
This is my show, Mr. Nadhoro. Kindly perform any <laughs> peculiar experiments on your own stage. Okay, I just kind of chose the first thing I saw. You can actually, uh... Still don't quite understand the gentleman came... Okay, hold up. You can investigate what I'm looking at, right? You can investigate what I'm looking at. Yeah, that was a great way of me wording that. Well, in that case, perhaps there's something in this pawn shop that the man was looking for. Look closely. Yeah, no, no, no. I wanna... I actually wanna... Can I see what this says? Yeah. Oh. We got all the scribble notes on the back of the flyer here. Hmm. I don't believe it. What is it? Listen to what it says. Name, Gina Lestrade. Height, 5 foot 2. Green cap, scruffy waistcoat, grubby white shirt, blue scrap, blue satchel, my bad, scratchel, <laughs> satchel. Is a detailed description of Miss Lestrade. Goodness. There's even a sketch of her, hat and all. Although, if he showed it to her, she, she fired that smoke grenade launcher in his face for sure. And look, the details of the shop has been written down here too. Winnie Banks, Prom Brokery, Baker Street. Redemption deadline, 15th of April. Which is today's date. Why would Mr. Benedict have all this information scrawled on the back of a piece of paper? Okay, so it changed. Alright, there you go. It's been a while since I've done this. Take that! Correction. Yes, what brought you to this shop in the first place is the information about Miss Lestrade. Quite so, my dear fellow. It would appear that the writing and sketch on the reverse on the reverse of the flyer pertain to the pickpocket, Miss Lestrade, and to Mr. Wendy Bakes pawnbrokery here. You ordinarily you origin ordinarily you originally told us <laughs> that you had merely given chase after Miss Lestrade after Miss Lestrade stole the redemption ticket from you. But that, sir. Is a thin, thinly, thinly, thinly failed lie. <laughs> Can you tell that I didn't get a good amount of sleep? It is the information on the back of the flyer that led you here today. By which I mean... Here, to Winnie Banks' property. Property? I don't even know why I said that word. Pawn brokery. And today, the redemption deadline... And today, the redemption deadline of that overcoat. So, you waited outside for the young girl, matching the description you've written down to arrive. Hmm. You had some link to, hmm. and you have gone through some link to find the reason for your pursuit of Miss Lestrade. In other words, there's some ulterior motive for your actions. That cane, which you clutch in your person, it's a contradiction. <laughs> it's a cane I had for years. It's my cane. I loved it as it loves me. Oh, the slums. Hmm. What's a furrow? Or furrow, however the fuck you pronounce it. It's the middle cap commonly found at the end of canes, Mr. Narahodo. Ah, the bit that makes it nice clacking sound on the pavement. Yes, exactly. Mr. Slums is right. It appears to be missing one on this gate. But it doesn't actually look broken, does it? No, it doesn't. Though the gentleman certainly did recoil when Mr. Slums identified the cane as suspicious. In other words, there's some secret about the cane that Mr. Benedict would rather we don't know. Alright. Initialing. Look here, Mrs. Sato. There's some letters on the handle. Ah, yes. Those must be initials, I think. In the West, it's customary for people to engrave their belongings with first letters of their names. So, Herlock Schloens would be HS, you mean? That's right. And the initials on the cane, obviously. Oh. AG. Ah. Uh. <clears throat> Why would it feel as though it's not quite right? Okay. We have engravings. Let's just make sure we check the, check the full, full cane, you know, check along the shaft. You know, because I don't want to fuck it up. Correction. This contradiction of which I speak, of course, is the initialing. A most astute observation, what did you say, Mr. X-Benedict? 
We are led to believe, sir, that your initials are EB. Yet, in the most possessive manner, you have in your grasp a cane bearing the initials AG. An incontra- mm, incontra- mm, incon- mm, I can't say words. <laughs> in incontrovable. Incontrivable. Whatever the fuck. Big ass word. A contradiction indeed. Would you not agree? No. You're wrong. This cane isn't- You said before that you had the cane for years. So, don't try and tell us that you borrowed it from a friend or found it in the park. In short, though you hold yourself to be a gentleman, you have withheld your true form. Huh? You recoiled, sir. Something wrong? Ah, and you're recalling you inadvertently facilitated the answer to the next conundrum to pres- Uh, whatever the fuck. <laughs> So many words, man. Let's get to the next part. Let's just do it. Can't you tell that I'm tired? <laughs> the handle which you inadvertently would like to conceal is the key to understanding the riddle. Let's consider the bare bones of what happened here. Miss Lestrade redeemed, uh, redeemed the fine-looking overcoat. And now a mysterious man has appeared introducing himself with a fake name. And claiming that, or that the overcoat belongs to him. But we know that he's actually that he actually identified Miss Lestrade from a written description, which suggests that everything he has told us is untrue. So what we need to do here is somehow prove that the overcoat cannot possibly belong to him. Check the back of it. Oh, it's a nice terror here. Split the seams. Oh, the seams on the shoulder is coming apart. So it is. Do you know a moment ago when Mr. Benedict was surprised by something w that was said? I thought I heard him make a rather strange noise. It sounded a bit like a tiny growl. But now, I think it's probably the sounds of the seams ripping open. If you look closely, it does seem to be very tight fit. The sleeves are stretched are stretched to burst. He wouldn't have... <laughs> I'm about to bust. He <laughs> wouldn't have had hope, hope of fastening it in the front. If you were to run around in it, I'm sure the whole thing would fall apart. Hmm, I like to see. <laughs> what? She said, Mmm, that I like to see. Sorry? So how can we make Benedict run around? Hello? You 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 need a you need a wet floor sign here? What's going on? He's really giving this some thought. <laughs> she said, Mmm, I like to see some of that. <laughs> like, okay. What the hell? Correction. The split seams, which you, which you evidently would like to conceal, is the key to understanding this riddle, you see. Yes, because the overcoat is rather obviously a poor fit. Having forced it over your broad shoulders, your broad manly shoulders, the seams is <laughs> the seams is already breaking apart. My suspicions were aroused from the onset. It seems like everybody's getting aroused in here right now. When you so when you so boldly lied about your name, so boldly waylaid, waylaid this pickpocket, waylaid. Yeah, we're going with that. That's what we're going. With. To steal the article that the young girl redeemed from Mr. Windbase. There we go. We did it. But what really irks me is this. The considerable crime the considerable crime I initially imagine has been considerably cur uh, cur curtailed I can't even say the words. I'm done. I'm done for the night. <laughs> I'm done for the night. The stream, like, fucking stopped itself. <laughs> the goddamn stream crashed. Tuck all the energy I had out of me tonight. Now, Mr. Benedict, let us continue. For we must exploit... Exploit? Expose the details of this elaborate crime. This is utterly absurd. 
Some days I have good ones. Some days I have good times when I'm reading dialogue. Other days I'm just fucking over every single word. Have you forgotten that I redeemed the article in the proper manner using the watchword? Had I not been the one to just... Mm. I still want to say disposit for some reason. I don't know where I got... I don't know where I got that word from. Whatever. <laughs> um, had I not been the one to... Uh, to fuck. Damn it. Deposit. The word is deposit, but for some reason I want to say disposit. <laughs> deposit is first place. How could I prob how could I probably probably how can I possibly have known the relevant details? Relevant? Relevant? Whatever. Watch where it can be discovered, as you are one too well, Mr. Benedict. Ah, your glance tells me more than you let off. Let us consider how one might learn the secret of a watchword relating to the pawn property. The method is revealed by the council members. Or the ledger. The direction of the... Uh, yeah. A part of me wish that they would stop. <laughs> they would stop. They would stop stopping it every two seconds, you know? They're like, let's talk about this. And I get it, right? But it also seems... Kind of like it's holding your hand. If you didn't, if you did know the word, Mr. Winnipeg would allow you to redeem the article, whether it's yours or not. So the question is, could this gentleman have found the watchword, or somehow? I mean, the ledger's open, right? And there's also this right here. Look at this, Mrs. Sato. Ah, it appears to be the memo Mr. Winnebake scribbled for himself. Let's see. What does it say? Oh, poor professor. Yep. Mr. Winniebanks must have made a note the watchwords his customer gave him right before their eyes. And an alarmingly clear script as well. Oh dear. I don't know where to look. Who knows what other secrets I might see. That's a pretty easy one. A little notelet on the on the desk. Notelet. That's a word I never used. The method is revealed by the notelet on the counter, which your eyes were inadvertently drawn. Yes, this broker here, this broker here follows the same procedure whenever a customer comes to redeem an article. He asks the customer for the watchword and notes down the response uttered on the notelet as he, um, he has in his hand. Then, he consults his ledger and confirms whether or not the watchword matches that of the article in question. I would expect nothing less of a diligent pawnbroker, but his diligence clearly has its disadvantages. What are you talking about? It is increasingly apparent to you, <clears throat> it is increasingly apparent that you were present in the shop before you, before your accusations against Ms. Lestrade. In all likelihood, you followed her inside and then observed her talking to Mr. Windybanks. When a diligent broker made a note of the watchword, as uh, as as is common practice, I cannot read. <laughs> you observed him writing the word "professor" on the notelet besides the ledgers. And that, sir. Was the master plan you devised to steal the pawn article from the young Miss Lestrade? Which brings us to at last the final chapter of this scheme. Why would you go through such lengths to redeem that particular article from the pawnbroker? Are you quite serious? For an ill fitted overcoat hardly seems to justify the effort. Much less a worthless music box, this. But naturally, you have very good reason to make them yours, didn't you, Mr. Benedict? I have no idea what you're talking about. Allow me to present a rather interesting piece of evidence. Evidence. You see, the picture postcard. 
The article we're talking about are the overcoat and the music box disc. It's what? <coughs> I need to drink some water. <laughs> My throat is killing me. <coughs> the articles we're talking about is the overcoat and the, oh yeah, that, that definitely feels a lot smoother. <laughs> the article we're talking about here are the overcoat and the music disc box. That was on that was on one of the that was on. That was in one of the pockets. Which according to Mr. Wendy Bakes isn't even worth a penny. And yet the man went through such lengths to steal them. Why? I wonder if perhaps we already have the evidence we need to explain. Could we? Really? I better have it I better have a thorough look through the evidence. Oh no, I got it. It has McGilded on the back. You see, this music box this long <clears throat> tells us tells us all we need to know. What's that on the back? It reads for McGilded. Ah, Mr. McGilded, Magnus McGilded, the man with no neck. The unfortunate philanthropist who perished in curious circumstances at the Old Bailey two months ago. That is a mouthful. But for the unfortunate philanthropist who perished. <laughs> a prominent man in London, though his loans, though his loan mongering demonstrated a distinct lack of, of scrub, of scrub, scribbles, 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 scruffles. So, you're an associate of his, are you? Or perhaps a subordinate? Mr. McGilded was a man of unusual small stature, in fact. He was precisely the right size for the overcoat that you squeezed yourself into. Your true identity remains shrouded in mystery, Mr. Eggs Benedict. But, the final conclusion here is crystal clear. The reason you came to this pawnbrokery today. Was to retrieve an article left behind by the late Magnus McGilded. To acquire an item deposited by Mr. McGilded. Deduction complete. Elementary, my dear. Well, well. Mr. Magnus McGilded. Not a name I expect to hear in these circumstances. Mr. Sloans, I'm afraid there's something very troubling on my mind. Pray tell, Miss Susato. Well, according to what Mr. Winniebakes told us earlier, today was the final day on which the coat could have been redeemed, was it not? Yes, ma'am, that is correct. Today would be precisely two months since it was first deposited. Well, today is the 15th of April, so two months ago. Would have been 15th of February, sir. That's right. It's all clearly recorded in my ledger. Wait. But... Isn't the 15th of February the same date as his court trials? Deposited at 10.30pm. What? But that would suggest... Yes, 15th of February. That was the day before the trial, right? But wasn't he locked up before that? Precisely the day on which the ominous murder took place. And half past ten in the evening. Precisely the time at which the terrible events were unfolding. Suggestive is not the word. It would seem the matter is entirely beyond coincidence. You of course had liberty to make whatever outlandish deductions you choose, however. Oh! I must insist you hand over the music box now. 
Come on, Mr. Wind, Wind, Mr. Windy Banks, you got this. It would be a terrible shame for you to return to your native land in a box. What, what do I do? Oh yeah? You're gonna shoot me in front of all these people? Fuck you. There's some things a man must protect at all costs. And this disc is one of them. This may, be, this may well be one of those things. Then again, it may not. Hold it, sir. Mr. Windy Vink. This is my shop. I can't allow any harm to come to my customers. If that were to happen. I should have taken my own leg. Don't point the gun at yourself, genius. Mr. Winnie Bakes, no. All right, that's enough. <laughs> Please tell me there's a police officer here. Yeah, Gregson. Inspector Gregson. Inspector. Oh, Inspector. That's right, Sunshine. The alarm was raised was raised on one of your the dedicated emergency lines. So, we got here as fast as we could. Now, what's this all about? Oh, praise be. Here at last. I was a moment away from forfeiting my own life in this very establishment. Are you gonna arrest him? He's pointing a fucking gun at me. Don't let him put... It seems you have the upper hand. He was gonna kill me. Right. You lot have got some explaining to do. I don't appreciate being bothered by some... Some petty... From petty... What? Argy Bargy? <laughs> Argy Bargy. Petty? Listen. Susato may be a lot of things, but if she's... Mikotoba is anything but petty, okay? Mr. Winnie Banks very neatly met with his... Wait, what? Mr. Winnie Banks very neatly met with his end. Yeah, by his own gun, as far as I can tell. What about me? Oh dear. And the whole and the whole of the British could wait. What? And the whole of the, of the British and the whole of Britain could meet with with its end if I don't get to the bottom of the case I'm supposed to be working on. What? What the hell is this case, Inspector? Spare no details, Gregson. Don't tell it to this fool. I I might have said a little too much, okay? No matter, it's nothing to do with you lot. Take him away, he almost shot me. Anyway, sir, you're gonna have to come with me down to the station. But of course, Inspector. Oh, Inspector! What, wait, what, did he, what? <laughs> I was gonna make a joke. I was gonna go, oh, Inspector, you can handcuff me. But he out here made a daring escape, you know? Get after him, lads. Whistle the beat officer, too. There's been a spat of thieves at pawn shops around here recently. So we fitted emergency buttons underneath the underneath the counters for brokers to let them know when they let us know when they're in trouble. Oh, Inspector. I was very worried. <laughs> I was very worried there for a while. Very worried indeed. Now then. Dude. Gregson. You're, you're, you know, I can't say you're cool because you're not gumshoe, right? But, and you have yet to prove yourself to me. But my guy, fucking why... Why do you keep throwing that food in your pocket? Stop doing that. Stop doing that. It's not good. You eat grease everywhere. It's fish and chips, man. He's just fuck. <sighs> just shoving greasy shit in his pockets. Slimy dude. <laughs> Slimy ass guy. I'll be taking whatever it is to make Gilda's down to down to the yard. Thank you very much. So hand it over. Oh yeah, sure. No, don't. Don't give it to him. It's mine. I'm sorry, miss. But anything belonging to McGill did it has to be taken in, into evidence now. As evidence? It's the policy demanding something... <clears throat> it's, the, it's the policy. Why did I... Fuck, man. <laughs> 
If the police demand something as evidence, demand, yeah, demand something as evidence, my dear fellow, we have no choice but to, but to copulate, 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 words. It's all yours, Inspector. Oh, you can take it, Inspector. Speaking about Inspector, what happened to Hisonoka? I miss that guy. He put his, see, that's, the, that's the gumshoe replacement I want. Hisonoka? That dude was, that dude put his life on the line for me. And so we hand Mr. McGill's disc over to the inspector. And we're sim, 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 summarily, 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 is a word. Turfed out, turfed? Turfed out of the shop and off the streets. To be continued. That was kind of long. Half of it was due to my fuck up though, to be honest. <laughs> Both the stream, uh, both the stream just, like, not knowing when the fucking, you know, stream just, like, losing its shit. And my computer acting slow for no goddamn reason, which I'm gonna have to f look at today. <clears throat> that mixed in with, uh, just, I guess tonight just wasn't a good night for me, honestly. Just fucking, <laughs> I could not read shit tonight, you know. But at least the last stream I did was pretty good. Let me check what time is it. Okay, yeah, no, definitely. <clears throat> well, unfortunately, this is definitely where I'm going to have to end it at. For now, anyways. Maybe later today if I have enough time. <clears throat> I gotta clear my throat. Maybe later today if I have enough time to uh, come back and do like an hour or two, I'll do it. Right, but as of right now, I think this is a pretty okay stopping point for us. Um, I, I don't know what to say, really, honestly, because I don't feel like progress has been made. Right, I'm pretty sure all of it is gonna come together. Right, but as of right now, we don't really have much to go on at all. We don't have any inkling as to what the big picture is. Yes, McGilt is involved and his death is involved. And probably the death probably the man who died inside the uh inside the um what you call it the uh the carriage. He was probably important in some way too. Right. And we'll learn more about um we'll probably learn more about uh you know um whatchamacallit everyone's whole agenda and stuff, right? Whether whether we learn why uh Von Zykes is uh, you know, picking his battles to be with us for some reason, right? Um you know what? I think, you know, if there's anything I can take away from this, I probably would say um I probably would say two things. One thing is that Lestrade Probably in some form or way, um, some sort of way, she must be kind of like doing grunt work for McGilded or something like that. She, I don't say she, I wouldn't say she's necessarily a bad person, but, um, it seems that maybe, maybe, uh, McGilded was like, listen, little fucking beggar girl, if anything goes bad, Here's some shit I gotta tell you. Cause if I'm going down, I want everyone to go down with me. I feel like that's where that's coming from, right? She probably doesn't care too much about that and probably just wanted to get money any type of way she can from his dead corpse. <laughs> and in terms of Von Zykes, I feel like uh us representing McGilded, us representing McGilded was a setup. I always felt like that was a setup, right? Because McGilded, right out the gate, he goes like, do you think I did it? And I'm like, yeah, I do. I'm like, yeah, I think you, I, yeah, no, I think you're guilty, right? But my job is not to, uh, my job here is to get you innocent because that's what I'm here to do, especially if I don't, I'll get my ass kicked out. And I feel like a part of that was we were supposed to fail, right? Which is probably why, uh, what's his name? Um, Lockhart, Lionheart, whatever the fuck the guy's name is, the um, 
the the chief justice, whoever the fuck guy is, I forgot his name already. Um, I feel like that's why he chose us to do it that day, right? I feel like that he might be a little bit evil, and just by chance, um, Von Zykes probably had an inkling that Mr. McGilded was in some sort of organization or some bullshit, something bigger's going down, so that's probably why he stepped in, and just by chance, it happened to be our trial, so then the next time we got another trial, I think he kind of just showed up to, like, suss us out. Kind of like do reconnaissance or something. Kind of like get a feel for, for uh, how um, Ryunosuke is in court and what he does. Just in case he has to, you know, look into Ryunosuke more, or um, for whatever the bigger picture is. You know, I feel like I feel like we just we're just wrong place, wrong time, right? I feel like that's what might be going on right now. That's the only thing I can kind of interpret from all this. But I could be wrong. But at the same time, I mean, I'm trying to think. Like, I, I've i never been like, what, what's the word I'm looking for? I can be wrong, right? But my track record when it comes to these type of games, like in the, um, in the other Phoenix Wright games, and also in Danganronpa V3, the streams we did for that. If I'm going by how, how those playthroughs turned out, fucking, I, like, usually at the halfway point, I figure out everything. <laughs> so, so, you know. I also still want to see where, uh, the swan lady comes into play. My fucking, my switch is falling asleep. That's great. Where the swan lady comes into play. I forgot what her name was. It was, like, Bridget or something. Or, I don't know, I don't remember. But, all that should come together. Well, hopefully it comes together. I really, I really don't want this game to end on, like, a cliffhanger. Because that would be so fucking annoying. But, you know, if it does, we got the second game, right? I'm not sure when I'll do that. But anyways, that's all the time we have for the stream today. Well, not today. Well, as of right now, anyways. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go upload uh, one of the parts for the Persona 4 stream, right? I've been very busy this week, so unfortunately I wasn't able to upload as much as I wanted to on YouTube, um, or just edit as much videos as I wanted to, or even record as much videos as I wanted to. So, for those who came and watched on Twitch, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. For those who are going to see this on YouTube, if you like what you see, first of all, sorry for my fuck-ups this whole entire video. <laughs> This was a bad one. <laughs> but, um, yeah, if you like what you see, please leave a like. It's uh, greatly appreciated. Um, please leave a like and a comment. It helps out a lot with the channel. And, uh, if you can, come and check out the Twitch, right? Uh, for those of you who want to support me a little bit more, uh, consider subscribing on Twitch, right? And if you got an Amazon Prime account, you got a free subscription through your Prime account. So you can hand that to any streamer you want. And if you want to hand it to me, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, what else? Oh, Twitter. It's right there on the screen and in the description on the YouTube page. If you want to, I don't know, add some funny things to me or send some fan art or whatever. Or show me something, you can add me on Twitter. And I will definitely see that. <laughs> I will definitely see that. Um... And I think that's everything I want to say, right? Uh, right now on the YouTube channel, along with Persona, uh, Persona 4 streams, along with those going up, is, um, I keep saying the Pokemon Marathon's continuing, which it is, but I'm still waiting for some stuff for that to, so I can 100% dive into it nonstop, right? So as of right now, I'm going to say it's on hiatus for a bit. Uh, what else? Oh, Vampire, right? That's getting uploaded on the, on the YouTube. So if you're into, if you're into, like, kind of a, it's not, it's not even an indie game because it's made by Donut, right? So if you're, if you're into, like, more plot heavy vampire type stuff, like, uh, you know, Victorian age type bullshit, um, you can check that out, right? It's not Vampire the Masquerade. Vampire Masquerade was a different playthrough. That's also on my YouTube channel if you want to watch that. But I think that's everything I want to say as of right now. Next time I'll stream is, well, streams on the schedule and stuff like that. 
And, um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> so, as always, I want to say thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Stay happy, stay healthy, and take care. I'm a chef, chef